Have you ever wondered why smartphones are built the way they are? This particular form factor, this rectangular shape, is this something that is very, very natural to us? Or can we do even better? So today, I want to take you on a journey to see, can we build a better personal computer? And can AI help us to get new superpowers? So what you already know is that phones have become our indispensable companions. We use them for over four hours a day. So if you calculate that over your whole lifespan, that amounts to 10 years. So we spend more time with our phones than with some of our life partners. <laughs> we pick them up more than 90 times a day to get information, get support, and stay connected with friends and family. So they truly have changed the way we work, play, and learn. But on the other hand, we also know they have become distractors. So most of the time, they sit in our pocket like a heavy rock. And when we actually do pull them out, then it interrupts everything around us. All of the social interactions are immediately broken off, and it seems like we're uh, disappearing into a completely different world. And just imagine if you pull out a phone in the middle of a dinner conversation. That's not a very nice thing you want to do, because you're disappearing into a world where you're currently not living in. So clearly, we can do better. And that's why I want to ask you, how long do you think we will still have phones? And well, when will something next come? What do you think? And you can raise your hands. Do, do you believe that in the next seven years, we see something new coming? Then please your, uh, raise your hands. Next 12 years? Next 15 years? Anyone believes that we will stay with phones for 100 years? <laughs> <laughs> Two people, maybe. OK. So you see, there's a lot of change that we feel is coming. The phones are very important. But what change and how could this look like? Let's look at what we have today. So if you look at the devices we have today, you notice they get more and more similar. They have the same building blocks. They have the same functionality in many ways. They just differ by screen size, ultimately. So one obvious thing would be, yeah, let's change the screen size problem that we overcome this. We cannot make the screen size much smaller because the resolution of our eyes is limited. So one idea would be, what if we attach a screen right in front of our eyes that gives us unlimited view of what we want? So I'm not sure if that's a good idea. And it reminded me a little bit of this. Yeah? So when you were a kid, maybe you heard this, don't sit too close to the TV. And maybe 20 to 40 years later, this is exactly what some people are, are building. So I believe virtual reality has a lot of merits and truly amazing experiences. But I think it's not the right direction as a daily companion that lets us be connected in the social life that we currently have here. So clearly, we need to try something different. And what we need to pull off is the following. I think we need to let the computer disappear. And how can we do it? We need to let the computer disappear into something that we're already using in the everyday. So it could be in contact lenses, it could be in earphones, it could be in glasses, it could be something completely else that we don't know yet. So what we need to make it successful, I think we need some kind of feedback that doesn't shield off from other people and from the interactions. This is something that we have learned now with phones that we can do clearly better. The second part is, I believe the computers need to be able to see the world as we see them, because then they can help us better. You don't have a keyboard. We need something else. Then we need powerful computing capabilities. Why? Because there are things that computers can do a lot better than humans, and they can complement us. So we need to unleash this power. I believe, actually, I wear some regular glasses is a good direction that should be explored. And I spend a lot of time in various positions in research and development in that direction. So to uh, see how that looks like, I brought a few examples. So you don't have a keyboard. So one example how this can look like if you're wearing these kind of glasses is something like this. 
So you still see how the normal world looks like. So you're fully connected. But on the other, uh, other hand, the computer also understands the environment, and even your hand, your body, everything. So interfaces can be much, much more natural. So it's not like a screen blocking it off, but it feels like it's already natural there. So that is a very cool thing, that interaction becomes natural. What are use cases that you could, could do with this? And how could this look like? I want to take it one step further on this. So here's an example where a person is wearing these glasses, walks into a record store. And of course, you already know what kind of preferences you have, what music you like, what you're looking for. So it can make your experience a lot smoother, help you to, uh, to get what you want faster. And I believe also a very powerful thing from AI is to help you preventing mistakes that you don't want to make, like crossing the street and not seeing a car is coming or anything like this. So these are functionalities that can be very powerful to complement us. So at the end of the day, it's about an AI companion that helps you throughout the day. To illustrate a little bit where we stand with this, I want to show you a very simple figure. So today, the method that we have been using for a very long time is programming. You can program new apps, and then other people can use the apps. And we tell computers very, very precise instructions. But then it's limited by what the app can do. In the recent months and years, we have now made progress that we in, uh, can use our natural language to tell systems what we want. And suddenly, it becomes not an app. It becomes a tool for everyone. So it empowers our capabilities significantly, because normal language, we understand. Every one of you can use this. But I think we can go uh, one step further. And this is by going into systems that can anticipate what we want, because they see the world of what we live in and what we want to do next. So the switch from instruction to anticipatory system is something that will give us a lot more capabilities. So how could this AI companion look like when we put all this functionality in, in, in these kind of glasses? On the one hand side, it sounds very simple. Many components are the same as we have in normal glasses. So we have still cameras, we have some kind of a display, compute power, we have wireless interfaces. But it's very, very compact. Again, the key is display that is transparent, that leaves us connected and doesn't overwhelm us. There are several technical paths to do it, from laser beam scanning and uh, micro LEDs, from merging the, the light with diffractive or reflective approaches. And these approaches are currently maturing. So I don't know how long it will take, another five or seven or 10 years, but there is a path for the display side. In addition to the display, of course, cameras. And I think what's very important to build privacy and trust in from the beginning, so that you know, fr like from your laptop, when you're filming someone, they need to be able to say no and understand what, what you're doing. So this needs to be there also from day one. And of course, to understand what we want and what works well, we need to see also inwards. We need to see the person, the reaction, and our eyes tell quite a lot about this. And of course, a lot more components that you uh, use that I mentioned already before. So in addition to the hardware, I think there will be a lot of change coming in understanding the world. And today, we train AI models with one big world model. But it's, our life is way more complex, and our personal experience is very different from each other. So basically, the system needs to be able to continuously have an understanding of the physical world. And then we can put different application layers on top that help us personally. So how could that look like at the end? So I think on the one hand side, it's very important to note our reality today is already a combination of physical and digital. So that will continue and will be further amplified by AI. A few applications where I'm personally excited of, and you might have completely different ones. I liked that we could get the superpower of breaking down any language barrier of real-time translation. That would be phenomenal. The other part is a more natural way of balancing diet and exercise which many of us are struggling with, right? to make good choices. The third one, if we want to shop, that we're not overwhelmed by what's offered, but we can faster find what we want. Last but not le least, super memory. And I'm not just talking about my problem that I sometimes don't know where my keys are, but I'm talking about the ability 
to learn much more than we can ever learn before with this kind of support. So if you're still not convinced that this is an important area that we need to rebuild and create together, I want to close with one exercise for you. Just swap your mobile phone with your neighbor for 10 minutes and see how comfortable you feel with it. <laughs> Thank you very much.